Sonic and the Secret Rings wasn't very good. I've covered that in a separate video, but it was deemed appropriate to make a sequel to that game. Development started shortly after Secret Rings' completion, with Sonic Team really wanting to establish the newly dubbed storybook series. Secret Rings had the Arabian Nights, and its sequel would focus on the story of King Arthur, with the name of the game being Sonic and the Black Knight. Is that a sword? Yeah, Shadow must have had dibs on the guns, so Sonic settled for a sword in this game. Personally, this doesn't bother me. This game doesn't really give off the try-hard edgy vibe, so it's a lot easier to accept for me compared to Shadow's guns and aliens and just all-round nonsense, really. There's not much more I can say, so let's get into this game's story. We open the game following this wizard being chased by a black knight and his goons. When she's surrounded, she performs a spell which somehow summons Sonic the Hedgehog, chili dogs and all. Sonic easily disposes of the goons, but the wizard stops him from attacking the knight and she makes him retreat. The wizard introduces herself to be Melina, the granddaughter of Merlin, and she explains that the Black Knight is King Arthur, who has been corrupted by the Scabbard of Excalibur, which also makes him immortal. Merlina tasks Sonic with putting a stop to King Arthur's reign of terror and points him in the direction of a sacred sword to help him with the whole immortality thing. Sonic then makes his way to the sacred sword and retrieves it. It's revealed that it's named Caliburn, and also it can talk. There's not much time for small talk though as King Arthur shows up, but is quite easily dealt with by Sonic. He is kind of immortal though, so the knight flees unharmed. Caliburn then suggests that Sonic should seek out the Scabbard's former owner to try and learn how to hinder its power, with the former owner being Nemu, the Lady of the Lake. Before seeking her out though, Sonic travels to the blacksmith to sharpen Caliburn up a bit. Oh, yeah. Much like Secret Rings, Sonic perceives many of the characters in this story to look like some of his friends. The blacksmith is Tails, Nemu is Amy, while Shadow, Knuckles and Blaze make up Sir Lancelot, Gawain and Percival respectively, who are some of the Knights of the Round Table. Speaking of the Knights of the Round Table, once Caliburn is sharpened up, Sonic runs into Lancelot while making his way to the Lady of the Lake. Once he takes care of Lancelot, he takes his sword and meets Nemu, who tests Sonic to prove he is a worthy knight. Whilst trying to complete Nemu's tests, Sonic runs into Gawain, bests him in combat and takes his swords. After completing the tests, Nemu informs Sonic that by using Caliburn and the other sacred swords held by the Knights of the Round Table, he can dispel the immortality that King Arthur has. Sonic already has Lancelot and Gawain's swords, so the only one left to collect is Percival's, so Sonic seeks them out and deals with them to claim their sword. With all the sacred swords in his possession, Sonic takes on King Arthur and just straight up kills him. Now, if I were a certain online review site, I would think this is the end of the game and just end this video here. <coughs> IGN. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> IGN. Yes, the credits roll, but this game is far from over as Merlina reveals that King Arthur was just an illusion conjured by her grandfather. It turns out Merlina was manipulating Sonic across the game in order to get her hands on Excalibur's scabbard. With the power of the scabbard, she summons creatures from the underworld and creates the Dark Hollow. Sonic and the Knights flee and are told by Nemu that the Sacred Swords can create a barrier which will limit the Dark Hollow's spread. Everyone then splits up to place the swords to form the barrier, but it's unable to stop the hollow spread. Sonic decides to stick with the original plan, however, to confront Melina in the Dark Hollow, where she reveals she plans on avoiding the kingdom's eventual doomed fate by using the power of the scabbard to make the kingdom eternal. She then proceeds to absolutely destroy Sonic. Caliburn ends up in two pieces and Sonic is easily outmatched. However, Nemu and the Knights give Sonic the power of the Sacred Swords, which restores Caliburn and turns it into Excalibur. This also turns Sonic into Excalibur Sonic, which is both stupid and cool. Sonic then defeats Melina using Excalibur and tells her that, yes, Everything has its end, that just means we have to live our lives to the fullest. Sonic is then revealed to be the true King Arthur, which is very silly, but I'll allow it. Also, we get a post credit scene where Amy claims Sonic made this whole story up as an excuse for missing their date, which is pretty funny. I really enjoy this story. First off, this is based off the story of King Arthur, so we're in Britain, which means I get some representation! Also, you get to kill a monarch, and I've always wanted to do that. In all seriousness, the main reason I love this story is because of Sonic. This is hands down my favourite characterisation of Sonic out of any game. Everything he does here just feels so right. A thing that I absolutely adore is that it's made very clear at the start of the game that what Sonic is going to do will be viewed as disgusting by many people. How does he react? Guess I can't be the hero every time. I love that. He doesn't care how his actions are viewed by anyone. He does what he does because he thinks it's the right thing to do. This is also shown with his interactions with the knights, where he emphasises his individuality and what being a knight truly means. A knight who fails their king is unfit to live. Isn't there more to being a knight than just serving a king? I know it's nothing complex, but I really like it. I'm also a big fan of the dynamic between Sonic and Caliburn. The sword starts off being dismissive of Sonic for being a complete novice, but warms up to him across the game and gives him recognition later on. Over the course of the game though, these two bicker quite a bit and I really enjoy it. <laughs> Also, it seems at times that Sonic really couldn't care less with what's happening in this world, and I don't blame him. He was probably just chilling, eating some chili dogs, and then BAM! Gotta save a kingdom from a spooky night. There's a lightheartedness that Sonic brings to his conversations, and I like that. 
It doesn't stop him from being serious when it matters though, and that shows most with Melina. You don't see Merlina much during the game, but I think her reveal as a true antagonist is a pretty decent twist. It's made clear early on that she has a problem with accepting death and things ending, and this is ultimately her entire motivation to take Excalibur's scabbard for herself. She wants the kingdom to live forever. Is that inherently bad? No. Merlina genuinely doesn't want to harm anyone, she's just trying to stop the kingdom from eventually falling. Sonic, however, disagrees with her, and this is portrayed in legitimately my favourite cutscene in the entire franchise. Sonic confronts Melina alone and simply asks why she did all this, to which Melina responds saying she wants to make a kingdom that never ends. Sonic takes exception to this. What good is a world that goes on forever? It's interesting how in this situation, it's the villain who wants to save the kingdom, and Sonic wants to leave it to eventually fail. Obviously, Melina takes it too far by using the underworld to enact her plan, but you can argue that no one here is objectively wrong in their viewpoint. Sonic is strong in his beliefs and refuses to compromise, so even though he's easily outmatched, he charges at Melina and is unsurprisingly pummeled. Caliburn breaks, and even then, Sonic refuses to give up. The Knights then tell Sonic to ignore Chivalry and run, but he responds with my absolute favourite moment in this game. It was never about chivalry for me. I just gotta do what I've gotta do. That's all. Sonic! Sonic! <laughs> Sonic's best theme, in my opinion, starts playing, and he suits up to take down Melina. He drops another one of my favourite lines during the boss fight, by the way. Nah, it's not gonna end. My stories only end when I stop running. It just perfectly encapsulates Sonic to me, and I absolutely love it. The way this is all presented is brilliant as well. These cutscenes are great. I already like the cutscenes in Secret Rings, but they're even better here. The art's better, and it's much more dynamic. The voice acting is also pretty good. Everyone here does a good job, but Jason Griffith is absolutely the standout. I may not be a fan of his early work for Sonic, but in Unleashed and in this game, he is great in the role. It's kind of a shame that they changed the voice cast after this game, because this is honestly the definitive Sonic voice to me. My only gripe is this line. Merlina! I just think it sounds weird. With my obvious love for this game's story covered, how do I feel about the gameplay? The game itself is practically split into two parts, with defeating King Arthur being the halfway point. Misty Lake acts as a tutorial, and each half of the game has five different areas to travel to. Though I should say that the five areas in the second half of the game are very similar to the ones in the first half, with there being a castle, some woods, great plains, a cave, and a lava-filled place. The areas aren't as varied as we see in Secret Rings, but I do still think they do a good job of being visually distinct. I should probably talk about the other thing in this game which is distinct. We have a sword, and it's quite important to how this game plays. Stages in this game mostly comprise of Sonic making his way through a linear level whilst taking out enemies with his sword along the way. You're still kind of on rails like Secret Rings since you only need to move forward to progress, but the control and setup here is way better in my opinion. Instead of holding the Wiimote sideways, we use the Wiimote and Nunchuck. This gives us an actual analog stick, and since Sonic doesn't automatically move forwards in this game, the levels are a lot easier to navigate. Everything here is a bit more conventional. Jumping is thankfully back to normal after the nonsense in Secret Rings, and while she still can't turn around, I don't find it nearly as annoying as before. Not that that really matters though, because I don't think this game really emphasises platforming that much, and that's because of the giant letter opener that Sonic's carrying. Now using the sword is very simple, you just swing the Wiimote which acts as a glorified button press. This is pretty much the only way of attacking in this game since the homing attack is absolutely useless. You can use it along with the sword to perform this homing slash move though, which is very useful. I've got to be honest though, the sword can be a bit unwieldy at times, which can lead to some loss of control. It's nothing compared to the loss of control you can experience in Secret Rings, but it's still a bit annoying. You can unlock different types of attacks by playing more of the game, but they can be a bit finicky to pull off consistently, and it's not like you need to use them since just widely swinging your sword works perfectly fine against enemies. With the sword, this game is much more focused on being an action game than a platformer. Don't get me wrong, there's still platforming, I just think there's more emphasis on taking out enemies here compared to something like Secret Rings. Hell, there's a guard button in this game, which should tell you that this is trying to be more of an action game. I don't mind it, but it can lead to levels feeling pretty samey. There are different challenges every now and again, but you're just taking out enemies in most of the levels. There are some boss fights, but the only one that's even remotely challenging is the second King Arthur fight. Every other boss is easy, except for the three knights, who are pathetically easy. Okay, Percival's a bit better than the other two, but I still wouldn't call her challenging. You can just bum rush them swinging wildly and they go down very quickly. They're honestly like the character battles from SA1, except this time Knuckles tries to off himself after losing. Oh no! These bosses do help make the game feel a lot more structured compared to Secret Rings though, since you'll always finish an area with a boss fight, which wasn't the case with Secret Rings' constant jumping about worlds. In fact, Black Knight as a whole is structured a lot better than the previous game. Levels don't last very long, and it's easy to figure out which stages are mandatory. This is because when a new area opens up, 
It means you can move on without worrying about doing any more levels in previous areas. You can complete the optional levels if you want, since they can help improve your rank and gain more materials. Increasing your rank allows you to unlock more skills, like more varied attacks and movement skills like the ones we saw in Secret Rings. A skill you unlock fairly early in the game is Soul Surge, which allows Sonic to target a single enemy so he can take it out easier. Timing this hit correctly will perform a perfect hit and fill up the Soul Gauge more, which means with some good timing you can chain attacks using Soul Surge for a long time. Whenever there are no enemies around, however, Soul Surge acts much like Speed Break from the previous game, allowing Sonic to boost forward at a high speed. The Soul Gauge can be filled by attacking enemies and by collecting these red fairies found across the level. I really like using Soul Surge, and weirdly it's because of the sound design. It just feels really satisfying to perform perfect hits in this game. Another thing I enjoy about Soul Surge is that it changes slightly depending on which character you're playing as. After defeating King Arthur, you can choose to play as one of the Knights of the Round Table in the stages that take place after Melina obtains the scabbard. They each represent a style that Sonic himself can switch to. Lancelot represents the Knight style, which has an equal balance of power and speed and is the default style for Sonic. Gawain represents the Paladin style, which prioritizes strength, and Percival represents the Cavalier style, which prioritizes speed. Each character controls mostly the same, but they do have their differences. For instance, Lancelot can use Chaos Control, Gawain can glide and throw his swords like boomerangs to take out enemies, and Percival sucks. She can use her flame powers and can double jump, but I don't think she's very good, especially compared to the other characters. I don't think any of the knights compared to Sonic, but it's cool to see them playable. You can also craft more swords to use for a bit of variety, but they can only be used by the knights. Sonic is stuck with Caliburn for the whole game. I'd struggle to call the sword play in this game good, because it's not complex at all, but I still like it. I'm a simple man, what can I say? I like seeing Sonic spin like a maniac and take out loads of enemies. Do you know what helps me enjoy this game even more though? The soundtrack. This game's music is great, and is one of my favourite OSTs in the series. The stage tracks are really good, but the reason I love this soundtrack so much is because there are many instances where we hear music or light motifs from previous games, and I absolutely adore it. Especially since we hear music from the adventure games, which I have a huge amount of nostalgia for. I brought up earlier that we hear the SA1 version of It Doesn't Matter, but we also hear the SA2 version in the fan art section, and we also get to hear Tails, Knuckles and Shadow scenes when we meet their respective characters. I love this sort of stuff, and I think this franchise can really benefit from having more music carry across games. Another thing that helps this soundtrack to be great is, of course, Crush 40. They contribute a whopping four songs to this game, including what I think is their most underrated track, which is Through the Fire. It's just a shame it plays during the night fights, because you'll hear the opening of the song and oh look at that, they dead it. No more song. Crush 40 also performed the game's main theme, Night of the Wind, the King Arthur fight theme, Fight the Night, and Live Life, which is the ending theme. All of these songs are great, but that's not really a surprise. Crush 40 don't really miss with Sonic songs. However, none of these are my favourite song in this game, because that honour goes to... The final boss theme, With Me, performed by Emma and Tina from All Ends and has Marty Friedman of all people on lead guitar. I love this song, and it single-handedly elevates this boss fight because the fight itself is really simple. You control Excalibur Sonic to take on Melina who was turned into the Dark Queen and she only has like three attacks, and that is being generous. You dodge or cut through this bit, dodge these orbs, and parry this attack to build your soul gauge. You can then use soul surge to cause damage where you can just- <laughs> You can spam if you want, but you can also perform perfect hits which allows you to attack for longer and cause more damage. With the proper strategy, this boss can last just over a minute, but in that case, you'll miss most of the song, and why would you want to do that? I think it's safe to say that I have a big soft spot for this game. If I take a step back, yes, it's not very well polished, the controls can get a bit tiring after a while, and the concept is a bit strange, but honestly, I don't care. I have so much nostalgia for this game, and even then, I genuinely think the story and writing is the best in the series. Add on the fact that I love the music, and I can't help but enjoy this game. Do you know what else helps though? This game can be beaten in under two hours. Even if this game was terrible, I wouldn't complain. It can't possibly be a waste of time. Now, I'd probably think a bit differently had I spent money on this game, but I never have. When I was younger, I borrowed it off my cousin, and nowadays... I honestly don't understand how this game received worse reviews than Secret Rings. I know this control isn't for everyone, but you can't convince me Secret Rings has better control. It barely works most of the time. 
Maybe because Black Knight is really short. But even then, this game has a lot of extra stuff you can do after beating it. You can go back and beat any optional levels you didn't beat and replay levels to obtain better ranks and materials to make more swords. This game also has a mega boss which is insane. After you beat the game, you can fight Lancelot again, only this time he remembers, Hey, I'm Shadow the Hedgehog. Die! He has his chaos powers this time around and the battle just gets harder and harder the longer it goes. If you go in with no strategy, you have no chance. What's funny though is that if you know what you're doing, this fight doesn't last long at all, but trying to figure out what you can and cannot do here is very difficult. It's hilarious how this entire game is easy and then you get here and then the difficulty gets set to screw off and die. And then when you beat the boss, you unlock a video showing someone beating it in about 5 seconds. Thanks Sonic Team, that makes me feel better about myself! This game honestly marks an end of an era for Sonic. Most of the voice cast get replaced in the next game, and we see a shift to a much more meta approach to the series, which has its highs and definitely has its lows. Because of this, this game is pretty much a swan song for the Dark Age of Sonic. It has its flaws, has a more serious story, and is maybe a bit too experimental for its own good, but there's a charm here that is absent from some of the Dark Age games, and ultimately, that's why I like it. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to know my thoughts on a more recent Sonic game, here's a video where I talk about Sonic Superstars. I hope you all have a great day, and see ya.